Unless specifically indicated otherwise, the content expressed are my views only and not necessarily those of LifePro Asset Management, LLC. The content presented is in no way an investment advice, solicitation, or an offer to sell securities or investment advisory services. The material is provided for general information and educational purposes based upon publicly available information from sources believed to be reliable. I cannot assure the accuracy or completeness of these materials. As such, the information in these materials may change at any time without notice. Reference to these discussions about IULs and annuities or fixed insurance products. Investments on fixed insurance products are different from investments in the stock market. Any guarantees provided by a fixed insurance product cannot be assumed to be guaranteed for any other investment. Welcome to the Rock My Finances show on K4HD Radio and Talk4 TV, where we put the fun in finance. Join powerhouse Jennifer Jost, CDFA, CMC, and private wealth advisor as she collaborates with you to create clarity, control, and confidence with your money, your way. It's not about the zeros. So what is it all about? Let's find out. Now here's your host and weekly friend, Jennifer Jost. Hey, y'all. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. So excited. Today is going to be such a great show. I am thoroughly thrilled to be here. And as you can see, uh, I'm not Juliet Cardona, but guess where I'm at? I am at Miss Juliet's house. Hello, hello, everyone. I have you. I know, I love it. I just got off the airplane. She picked me up at the airport and her amazing. What do you have? I got you got to brag. Okay, I have a G392. It's uh, pretty fun, spicy. It's got a V8 for those of you that don't know. So, which means <laughs> you know when she is in the house. Let me tell you, like it's so fun. So you might know a little bit about me and maybe not, but I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here on the on the podcast. And we like to brag. We like money. We like everything money can buy. We love our experiences. We love taking care of our families and our animals. And that's what today is going to be all about. How do we have our amazing lifestyle? And how do we have our animals in our life? And so I had to have Juliet because I've known her for, what, eight years-ish now? Something like that. And she is an equestrian woman, let me tell you. So we're <laughs> going to hear her story. And we have animals. We have our puppies running around here. She just got a new one. I'm going to let her tell you all about that. And then she's also a financial advisor along with myself. And so we always make sure that our clients understand when they go into a big um, – investment. It is an investment with your time and love and, and energy and money. And so like I just had a client, um, which is what, in other words, sparked it. She got a great job. She's, she's doing really well in her career and she wanted a horse her whole life. So she just bought a horse. In fact, I think the horse was delivered yesterday. So it's so, right. It's so exciting. And that's a huge undertaking. I have another client that has, I might not say this right, but I think it's a tortoise. <laughs> and so she had to do a trust because they live outlive the owners, right? They live forever. So she had to do a trust on where it's going to go. Who's going to take care of it. She's got life insurance. She has everything to take care of her animals. She has like seven dogs. Like she, she has tons of stuff. So we wanted to talk about that today and give you some tips and tricks and how to actually make sure that you are not giving everything away, like giving everything to your animals, but also saving some for yourself. But our animals are part of our life. They're part of our lifestyle. They're part of our family. And so how do we take care of them the right way? Uh, and then there's other people that never take them to a vet. They're just an animal. Like I talked to somebody else. like, eh, a dog's a dog. A dog's a dog. So everyone's a little bit different. And another thing you're going to learn on Rock My Finances, you cannot get it wrong. There is nothing wrong here ever. Everything you think, do, say is perfect for who you are at that moment. So there's no shame, no blame, no mistakes, no errors, no nothing here. You are perfect. Everything you've done is perfect. Everything you think is perfect. And we love you as is. Now, do you change your mind? Of course. It's our woman's prerogative. We change our mind. And things might be different down the road than they are right now. But there's no wrongs here. So, so anyways, we're just going to jump right in. And we like to always start with two things. First thing. What did you spend money on in the last week that you love, that brought you joy? Miss Juliet. <laughs> I know. Last time I had my nice little yellow Yeti. I would say this week, uh, my husband takes the cake, but it was a joint purchase. Um, we are a Tesla owning household now. Woo! 
Woo! So we spent a lot of money on said Tesla, but um, we're excited about that. My husband drives a ton for work, so it'll be nice that he can do his meetings while it charges. So that's my favorite purchase this week. Okay, that's a badass purchase, y'all. <laughs> From a Yeti to a Tesla. Right? <laughs> and that's the way it is. And that's the way we want it, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever we're spending our money on, we want to love that. It's funny because I have, um, I have clients that... Uh, we put this in their spending plan. We don't do the B word, no B word, no budgeting. We okay. do spending plans so that we plan for where you're going to spend your money and we enjoy it. We want you to spend money. We want you to have a blast. We want you to have a good time with that. And so when we plan for that and then you go and get said Tesla, yep. we celebrate, we yeah. celebrate the heck out of that. That's awesome. That brought you joy, brought you fun. It's going to be fun driving around, learning the computer. <laughs> like, oh my yep. God. That's <laughs> a little bit of a learning curve there. <laughs> a little bit. For sure. So that's fun though, but we want to celebrate that. I had another client that got a brand new uh, Porsche and I was so excited. I love Porsches. And it was, she was, she called me and she's like, oh, I'm like, oh, yay. And I'm screaming and jumping up and down. <laughs> and she's like, I know it's hard to tell people. I'm like, no, 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 we brag here. We love it. We love it. When you have enough money and you are saving for your long-term lifestyle in those senior years and you're saving for that and you have no credit card debt and you own your home and you're traveling the way you want to travel and you're eating the way you want to eat and you're exercising the way you want to exercise and you want to buy an extra fun thing, let's do it. Like it is okay to enjoy life now as well. So I love it. So the Tesla is a great thing that you spent money on this week and it's very exciting. Definitely. And I'm sure your husband's excited as well. Oh yes. Yes. But I was thinking of you when I did my money date, my weekly money date, right. And moving that down payment over to the checking and all that good stuff. Um, I thought a lot about some of the work we've done together and I wanted to give you a quick little plug because I could not never have spent money on two new cars in a single year. Um, past, money version of myself like it just would be too much doesn't matter how much you're making um what's in the bank it would just feel like too much so too decadent too spoiled too, too yeah the guilt the negative emotions um and i think it ties really well into what we're going to talk about today because you don't usually feel guilty when you get a new puppy you might lose a little sleep um but you don't have this like buyer's remorse typically like I spent too much money on my dog or my cat and sometimes you may rescue an animal right maybe it didn't cost you anything um but at the same time it's important that we put our energy in the right places like you have driven that point home for me and I know so many of your clients um because if you are intentional about your spending and then you finally hit that hurdle where you're like I can buy the Tesla um, and then giving yourself that permission to do it and follow through. Um, I think it sounds really cheesy, but it's kind of a version of living your own truth, right? Instead of depriving yourself of that thing you really want. I love um, that. I love that. And if you plan for it, you can have it and it's okay, right? Exactly. And to be fair, I mean, my husband and I sat down with our finances at the beginning of the year and we said, Hey, like I need, a, I needed a car. He didn't need a new car, but his job with the demands and how many miles he was putting on it. Um, he had a little sports car, a Hyundai coupe before, um, and before he had this job and, you know, putting over, I think 35,000 miles on it just in the last couple of years. It's just, it's a lot. So lots of reasons that went into that monetary large purchase and decision making. But like you just said, like we had the money set aside and it's been it out of sight, out of mind, but still making money, which is great. Um, and now we're deploying that resource and putting it to work. And I kind of, I, I, and this is just me. I mean, I don't research Tesla's or anything, but I feel like it's an investment. I oh, mean, sure. I, I had my Denali, I bought my Denali when I was raising my kids and it was my, it was a brand new car. And I had that for 10 years 250,000 miles and it was an amazing car. So, and you now that when I first met you and you were looking to upgrade, I remember that was like one of your business goals, right? Yeah, With you, the it's your fault. I got an Audi. Yeah. Just right. saying kids. It, like, my fault. it was so funny. We were started working together and I'm like, I need a new car. Cause I was commuting in this big Denali, which was not smart. And I'm looking, of course, sensible, frugal, uh, Toyota. They last forever. They're amazing. I love them. You know, um, Hondas, I was checking out. I was even, I even sat in a Mercedes, but, and she's like, let's go check out Audis. I'm like, Audis, I'm from a small town. Nobody has an Audi in there. I can't, I can't do that. She's like, oh yeah, you can. 
this little thing <laughs> when you go on the car lot like and she's, 22 and yeah the she like struts in cute uh, we're, we're in our little work clothes yeah we're in our suits yep and we clip flop clip flop exactly <laughs> clip flop I can't do that I have flip flops on right now so that's not work but you get the gist and we go in there and I'm test driving I'm like literally going okay this spoiled little brat has taught me how to up level myself so you helped me up level as well <laughs> see this crazy money coaching thing that we have going on, it's this interesting balance, right? I mean, we have similar personalities, like being extroverts and wanting to put ourselves out there, but then we have very different money styles, at least when we met. And we've both done a lot of shifting and growing. We nudged each other on that one. Me, you know, work less Saturdays. I know the kitties don't get angry, but sometimes you might resent yourself. Oh, oh my it. gosh. Okay. This is hilarious. <laughs> so I'm old school. I'm in my late fifties. Y'all we work ethic. What is that? You just worked every day. Like there was yes. no question. My parents owned a business. I owned it from 1920. I owned a business. So you work every day, seven days a week. There's no not working. This one comes in. Oh, I don't do Saturdays. <laughs> Excuse me? You don't do Saturdays? What the hell does that mean? Do you remember exactly what I said to you, too? Because I do. No, tell me. I said... I blocked out. At oh, and she, she just looked at me with this blank stare, like, did this little girl that just came into this business just say that to me when I am here mentoring her? And I did. And you know what I said? I remember. I said, how am I supposed to work Saturdays and Sundays and enjoy my money that I'm working so hard for Monday through Friday? And to be fair, I was brand new in my business. I mean, I, we're, we're not talking like I left the office at five, right? Like oh, I no. left the office maybe at six to go to a chamber event, right. which of course I stayed and rubbed elbows as long as I could um, to get to wherever the goal was for that, right? Or whether it's building a stronger connection, finding a new client, a new uh, person to share clients with or somebody that can help my clients, right? Like CPAs and those amazing attorneys we love so much that give us our disclosures. Yes. Uh, but you know, for me, it was like, I'm working my tail off. Sometimes I can't make it to the barn after work. So Saturdays were my haven. It was like, this is why I do what I do. And I think, again, a good segue into talking today about are those animals that we spend so much time and money with worth it? I mean, for me, I'm talking about a horse. I mean, that's a human practically as far as expenses go. Um, I mean, I know at one point we added it all up and it was some, and this is like 2010 prices. <laughs> I mean, it, it can be depending on your sport and what you're trying to do, but we were showing at the time. I mean, it was about, about a $20,000 a year sport. Um, and that's a lot, that's a lot of commitment. I mean, that's some, sometimes people don't even have that much money left over at the end of the year. Um, and I think for me, you know, my dad was like, if you're going to have horses, you know, <laughs> I'm not footing the bill for that. <laughs> so I talked to my peers who rode horses. It was my first version of networking, robbing elbows at the barn. You're tacking up, getting ready for a ride. Um, and just finding out what these older people were doing to pay for their sport is honestly how I found a career in, I hate to say it, but in sales. Yeah. Um, we are client facing, I look at it as helping our clients, but at the end of the day, in order to pay for the horses and the puppies and the airplanes that take us everywhere, um, I got to have a paycheck, right? It just comes with that territory. Uh, and I think for me, that's what gives me my drive. Like my whole first half of well, my whole career until I got married, I guess, <laughs> was pretty much just working to make sure I could support Georgia and I um, and the lifestyle that we wanted, which was pretty plush. I mean, we went to horse shows probably like four to six a year yep. um, for a long time. And uh, that requires a lot of training. I mean, if you think about, um, so I guess one step back, a little background on my sport, it's a triathlon. So um, my horse and I trained really hard every, and that was the other thing. Um, as you start to go through the levels, it's an everyday commitment. It isn't something where you can come three or four days a week and ride at the level that you need to ride. Um, because it's muscle memory, just like working out at the gym. If all of a sudden you haven't been doing your biceps, 
your bicep curls, right? And then you just go pick up some big heavy weights. I mean, you're going to struggle to do it. And then you're going to be incredibly sore the next day. Well, it doesn't fly when you're in a triathlon. That's three days long. <laughs> um, and the other thing too, is it's not only me keeping myself fit. It's the horse too, right? I have to keep her fit. Um, so if I'm not doing that, then that's an additional cost on my budget to pay for someone else to ride them. Right. So, um, that can be a factor. Yes. You have friends that might, you know, pinch ride for you on a day you're stuck at work, but that's not something that's usually sustainable. So there's a lot of planning that goes into specifically equestrian sports. I think just with the, not just the style of the sport, but how horses are They're, you know, we're used to seeing them in Westerns. They're galloping across the plains all day and night for, you know, however many months it takes. Well, in reality, they were swapping horses at the rest stops, you know, or they were giving that one horse a lot of breaks. They are not, they're not sturdy a of a forever. creature. Yeah. No. Um, and so sometimes they get hurt and they break down. And um, that's actually what I've been going through more recently with Georgia. She's 17 now. Um, in the last three years, we've actually been trying to rehab her um, back to something where we can ride her every day and enjoy each other. Um, but right now she's my expensive, uh, wallflower and I take her out and just spend time with her to enjoy it. Now, when so you, shifts. cause you say you, you have Georgia, you wanted to be in the sport. You wanted to compete. Yeah. All of that was happening. What happens if someone's not competing? Oh yeah. Good it's point. still, you're still a huge so, commitment, right? Yeah. I mean, with Georgia getting injured, um, that's a whole nother gamut, but even if you just want to have a horse to enjoy, like I have a bunch of friends, um, that I've met over the years who just have a horse and they take them out a few times a week, go for trail rides or, you know, a stroll around the property. Um, and that can be a really good lower maintenance way <laughs> of, um, scratching that horse itch that some of us have. Yep. But my <laughs> new client got her horse for trail rides. Well, and exactly like yeah. that. Right. And that's a pure enjoyment, um, stress reliever. I think that's how horseback riding started for me. And then it became my sport. And I think that's an important distinction that I've, I, I came across. And there were times when I talked to you earlier in my career where, you know, I have this riding career that, I mean, not, that sound, makes it sound a little bit cooler than it is, but it is a career, right? Mm -hmm. And I was hitting international level competition, which means you have to go to specific shows to get the scores to be able to comp continue to compete in that. And your coaching class. and your lessons and your, like, oh, it's a huge yeah. commitment. Yeah. Right. And I mean, and at the barn, it would be ideal if I would ride another horse besides mine, because then you, you develop your muscles further, right? You're just, you're better, more pra practice makes perfect, like yeah. with anything. Um, and I think it's very different. There was a time where the barn was just my outlet. It was just something fun that I did just for myself. And then it also became this commitment that I made to uh, my horse where I'm like, Hey, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to keep you fit um, so that we can compete. And that's when we flipped that switch, it became a little bit like a second job. And does she, um, cause obviously I don't have a horse. I'm dogs and cats <laughs> and rats and nothing wrong with that. And birds and, <laughs> reptiles and all that other stuff, <laughs> um, fish, what else? Oh my gosh. We've had so much throughout the years, but how do you know she likes that or what she likes and what she doesn't like? That always interests me. Like I'd love to get to know a horse well enough to really know what they feel. That's a great question. I've had people ask me that actually a lot. Like, does she like jumping? Does she like the dressage work? That's no jumps for non equestrians. Um, <laughs> and Georgia, I mean, she, loves to jump. So here's a little story, a little quick one. Um, when I first got her, we were living in Washington state and our, it snowed up there because we were North and toward Idaho and, um, Spokane. And when the temperature would drop, it would get so cold that you couldn't really ride your horse because you didn't want them to damage their lungs with how cold it was. So okay. you just turn them, turn them out in the arena, let them play, um, self-exercise, like whatever you want to do is fine. So I remember one of the first days I put her out in the arena and the, or my coach had set up a bunch of jumps for someone else and she goes around and she's playing and bucking and just frolicking, having a good old time. And the next thing I know, she starts perking her ears at the jump. So they'll what's called walk on the fence. So you see them see the jump and they start setting up for it. So they'll sit their butt down and pick up their head and they like lock. 
And she started locking on, on the fences. And so I knew she was going to start jumping them. And the next thing I know, she just goes around the arena and she's popping over them. And none of them were too big for her or anything like that. And she would squeak over the, some of them, like squeak, like a little squeak of joy over the top of the fences. Now, does every horse love jumping? No, of course not. Just like humans, right? But Georgia loves jumping. That's like, so cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, they just like any animal. Like, you get to you know You get them. to know them. You bring out their personality. They start to reflect yours a little bit. Georgia loves food. She's very food motivated. We have that in common. <laughs> <laughs> food motivated. I like that. Well, yeah. my cat's real easy. She bites you when she's done. So that's like very easy. <laughs> done. <laughs> done. 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 <laughs> Horses can buck you off too. They're not feeling there it. you go when they're not feeling it. Yep. Done. So when you're helping your clients, yeah, because uh, we do our spending plan. And so when you're helping your clients, how do you help them um, forecast okay. spending for their new equestrian animal or whatever animal? I mean, you just right. bought Aggie. Big ticket item. Right. Yes. So. She's a big ticket item. And yeah. we don't know if whenever we get a new dog or usually expensive dog or cat, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know if they're going to need a vet. Like we have to plan for the vet. We have to plan yeah. for, there's no telling. Now, like I just left my house. So thank goodness I live with my daughter. So she's going to come check on my cats. If not, then I got to plan 50, 60 bucks a day for someone to come in and just check on the cats. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you, what, so you, you're kind of tied to your animal. Right. Um, but how do you make sure that they're forecasting down the far or down the road. How long do horses live? Yeah. Great question. So that can depend just like with humans, but life expectancy is somewhere around like probably mid twenties to early thirties. Okay. It depends on the breed. Um, and of course other factors like diet exercise, just like with humans. Um, but I think it's a great question and I'm going to start with Aggie. So Aggie is our 13 month old, yeah, 13 month old Bernadoodle doing the math in my head there. And, um, another purchase that Ryan and I thought quite a bit about before we jumped in, I wanted, we wanted, he wanted me to get a pup way before the pandemic. And I said, you know what? I just think I've, I'm stretched too thin between the office and Georgia. Um, I just don't know how I would have the energy to train a puppy because I wanted a puppy, not like a rescue, not a full grown dog. So I started researching breeds. And as you know, we have Clutch, our golden retriever, and he is amazing. And I thought, well, why not get two? Well, then we house sat a friend, German Shepherd, also a shedding creature. And just having two shedding large 100-pound dogs in my house taught me really quickly that my dog was going to, to not shed. Not shed. Yes. I was like, my Roomba is already working overtime. If we double this, I, I don't think I can handle it. So I started looking at breeds. Um, that were either crossed with poodles or breeds that don't shed naturally. And I wanted something bigger so Clutch could play and we wouldn't have to worry about anybody getting hurt. Um, and I think Ryan and I have decided we're a big dog family. It's just what we are. Um, so I started researching breeds. I've always loved Bernese Mountain Dogs. They've been one of my favorite breeds forever. And my reason for never wanting one is because they typically pass away early, like around age eight. So when I started thinking about this whole predicament I was in, I go, I wonder if anyone started breeding like Bernice mountain dogs with something that doesn't shed. Well, lucky for me, my friend Google had a couple breeders and there's not very many, um, but I was able to find one on Instagram. Of course, I got obsessed, started following their page and I was sold. I was like, I got to have one of these. Well, then the pandemic came right the year we were planning on getting the puppy. We were going to get married in September and get the puppy right after. Um, well, as we all know, <laughs> the world had other plans. So as we all got sheltered in place, as most of us are aware, dog prices jumped, right? Yep. Everybody's starting to look at dogs. Well, designer dogs too. So now my Bernice Mountain dog that I was forecasting was going to be maybe like two grand. The price was literally doubling. Wow. And the breed, like the different litters, different prices. So I start, I looked at Ryan and I was like, all right, I did look at other breeds. I thought about doing like a sheep, a doodle, and there's great other breeds. Don't get me wrong. But we both really were married to this Bernie's Bernadoodle idea. I love it. So I think, again, it's planning ahead. We looked at where we were. We said, hey, well, we're going to delay getting the dog. We'll save a little longer and pay double. <laughs> well, we did. I shouldn't whisper, but it's true. Right. And, um, there was some fear in that. And like, we talked about, you know, putting money aside. So we got 
the puppy. Puppies require lots of vet visits and shots and different things. Um, some lifestyle changes, you know, crate training, that kind of thing. Lucky for us, um, she's been a dream. She does copy her big brother. Um, but we do, we set money aside every month. I have a, a line in our spreadsheet. It's not a budget. Budgets are diets that don't work. <laughs> um, but in our spending plan, right? So we have a line and I average out what we tend to spend on the dogs per year. Um, now I have a whole year soon with Aggie, but with Clutch, we use that same barometer and added a few, you know, hundred dollars for the extra vet visits, which was great because yep. uh, we've got a we got a foxtail stuck in our paw, we got allergies. So there've been a couple extra little things there. Thank you for pet insurance. I was going to ask you, do you have pet insurance? We do. So most people are completely unaware, and this depends where you live, but living in this right across from the Silicon Valley here, we have a lot of companies that do a lot of employee benefits, um, like additional benefits for their uh, workers. And one of the things that Ryan's company offers is pet insurance. That's and wonderful. So we get it. Yeah, it's 50 bucks a month, I want to say, for both dogs, and that's our share. Um, and it covers them against, and we got the one that does like illness and like major medical stuff. That's great. And we'll then you can choose your in. deductible. Yeah. So it's great. And I started a couple of my girlfriends got dogs, um, a few months ago as well. And so they were asking me about the pet insurance and turns out both of their, um, uh, them had, a their corporations offered the same thing. Thank you. I yes. love it. Exactly. That's cool. So, and you just never know when they're going to get hurt. So it's great to yep. take them to the vet, have that peace of mind, and then mail that bill for reimbursement. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. So yeah. when we come back, uh, we're going to do a commercial here. Ron's going to tee that up. And then when we come back, we are going to give you some tips at the end. I know we talked about it when we were in the car. I don't remember what we we're going to say, but it's going to be really good. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. Um, I got you. Okay. She remembers, of course. And so um, that, and then I also want to go into a little bit um, uh, uh, about, you just said corporations and you brought that, you teed that up. So we're just going to go all over the place here. But if you are working for a corporation, you do get a W-2, uh, you need to hear this. Like, so stay tuned because we have found some things that our clients did not know and it cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. We'll see you back here in a minute. See you soon. Wait, the show isn't over yet. There's more fun and finances ahead. Jennifer will be right back as we have a special bonus offer for you right here on Rock My Finances, broadcasting live on K4HD Radio and Talk 4 TV. Hey, y'all, it's Jennifer Jost. Are you ready to transform your relationship with money? Rock My Finances Club is your weekly mastermind for wealth empowerment. Join me live for your personal weekly group video sessions and access your personal portal with the video library at any time, including your success system and way more bonuses. Go to rockmf.com for your financial empowerment. Make yourself a priority today. Schedule a chat with me at rockmf.com and achieve your feminine financial freedom finally. Oh, and don't forget to ask me how to save 50%. See you at our weekly mastermind. Okay, Rock My Finances on K4HD and Talk4 TV is back. Once again, let's put the fun in finance with your host and weekly friend, Jennifer Jose. We're back. I love that commercial. And I would love for you to, wherever you're watching us at or listening to us, subscribe, download, comment, all that good stuff. If you comment... You will get a free gift. If I can tell that you've subscribed or followed either the Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're at and give us a comment, give us a question, give us any type of a comment and let us know how you like the show. If you want to hear about anything about finances, uh, if you have any horses or animals, love to have you comment on that. And if you do, we will send you a free gift. So just so you know, and it will be useful that you can put into your finances today. We don't give hokey baloney. Like we give you action things that you can use today. So thank you so much. So download, subscribe, like, follow, all that good stuff. And then come back again next week. So <laughs> yes, back to, oh, I mentioned uh, that if you are working for a corporation and if you are 
contributing to their retirement account, there's two things. First of all, we're going to do another podcast about how you can do that differently because that's what we're doing now is we're helping corporations do things differently and saving money and being uh, better advocates for their employees. I want you to check your retirement account. I had a client last year that we just realized that in her account, she was paying thousands of dollars over the many years that she had worked for this company to a company to handle her retirement account. And she had no idea. There were so many hidden fees in her retirement account. I made one call, wow. changed it, and she saved thousands of dollars. I can't give you all the details because uh, our compliance officer, Scott, would go bananas. Yeah. So I can't go into all of that. But I can say check your retirement account with your corporation that you're at now and make sure there's no hidden fees. So that's that. Then check if you have pet insurance. Yes. So go into your employee benefits portal or even just call, send an email to your HR team and just find out. Um, that's one of the big things that companies are starting to offer. And it's such a great benefit to you and your pocketbook. And hey, maybe you can even expand your little furry, furry pack. A furry <laughs> pack. I love it. I love, love, love it. So going back to our clients and helping them make sure that they're doing the right thing for their animals and everything that they're doing. Yeah. How do you, um, how do you, how do you do that? Like, how do you help them balance it? Yeah. Basically? Well, I think like that's a good question, but I think it comes back to kind of some of our financial basics, right? We have the money that we bring in. We have our goals with that money. And as long as we're clear about prioritizing those goals and analyzing it from the perspective of, okay, I, let's make numbers up, right? Like, hey, I've got 10,000 a month coming in. I need five to live on. And then I've got 2,000 discretionary expenses. So that leaves me with 3,000 left over, right? What am I doing with that extra 3,000? Is that going toward, you know, nights out with friends? Is that going to trips, vacations? Is that going to savings? Um, because that is your spending power. That $3,000 that I just ran through in that example is what you have control over. We don't have control necessarily over, you know, our employer giving us a raise. Not that we shouldn't ask for them every chance we get, especially us ladies. Um, but we do have control over the money that we receive and what we do with it. So if you take that money coming in, and you look at, all right, I have a goal. Like I want to buy my first horse. I don't know everything that it's going to cost, but I know I need to start setting money aside. If you even just take that first step to some, some banks, even you don't have to open a separate account. You can even um, put a memo in there, a savings goal. So set a target of what you want to have for that animal or sport, whatever, however, that's going to look for you. And then start saving towards it. See how long it's taking you to get there. Right. If you're going to set aside maybe like 500 bucks a month, that's a, a goal that you you are intentional about um, intentional about hitting sooner. Right. Five hundred dollars is a lot of money a month. So if you put that towards your goal, you know, you're going to have a good chunk of change set aside by the end of the year. And then what you do with that is obviously up to you. That's your empowerment part of deciding, do I want to follow through on what I set this money aside for? Do I still want to proceed? Do I still want the Tesla? Do I still want the car? Um, do I want the horse, the dog, whatever it is? Um, so it's, it's like anything, honestly, it's like whether we're setting money aside for retirement, it, this is the fun bucket, right? So this isn't going to be a return on investment. That's going to, you right. know, my dog isn't going to pay for my retirement, unfortunately. Right. Um, isn't going to help me with long-term care either. No, they'll be long gone, unfortunately by then. But if we're intentional about that, that's the first step. The yep. second step is look at what you know is going to come with that animal. Research. So, research it. Exactly. Google is your best friend. It's my best friend when I started my practice. It's still my best friend. So go on there, say, hey, you know, what, like horses, I'll give you a quick rundown. Most people have no idea. So horses, they need vaccines um, at the seasons changing, right? So just think of it as like three times a year. They need their teeth done annually. They need shoes every six to eight weeks. Uh, they require daily care as well, as far as, you know, like grains and supplements and things like that exercise. Um, so you sit down and you pencil those out. Now <laughs> we're also in this whole inflationary period, right? So maybe we need to 
Pump increase exactly. all of our goals right now. So maybe instead of taking on new goals, we just, if we get a raise, we keep putting money in those respective buckets because that's the thing. We just don't know. We Horse don't could know. get hurt. Dog could get hurt. And all of a sudden, you know, you've got two grand in the bucket, but you needed three. Yeah. At least you're not having to put 3000 on a credit card, right? Yep. Hopefully you have an emergency fund to cover that other thousand. And if not, then only a third of that whole bill is going on something that you can't pay immediately. Right. I love that. I love that. So Juliet just uh, mentioned a few things I want to back up to. That's very important. Our whole brain and our body and everything. I mean, if you look at it, there's a gym on every corner. Everyone, we already know if you eat, put in more than you put out, you're going to gain weight. Like we all know it's, it's not a mystery on why we're gaining weight and why we're not and why we're not losing. But why do we still struggle with that? And it's because you can't just take away food. You can't just change one thing. You can't just add one thing. Our mindset doesn't do that. Our lifestyle doesn't do that. So same with money. What you think about one thing is how you think about everything. If you do not think that you are a disciplined person, you are not going to be it in your money or your food or your ex-lovers or whatever it might be. Uh, making sure your yeah. kids are doing what they're doing. Like it, how you feel about one thing is how you th feel about everything. So what we want to make sure is if you have that goal of an animal or a vacation or a Tesla or whatever it is, yeah. it's easier to save money towards something than it is to be restrictive of, I can't afford that. Like mm -hmm. when you, when you mentioned uh, in the beginning, when I met you, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I'm like, yeah, you can like, Mm -hmm. I have a client now. It's like, I can't afford that. I'm like, yeah, I know I have your money. I'm your money advisor. I know you can like, where does this thought come in our head? So now we bring in the F word, uh -oh. my favorite F word feelings. You feel like you can't afford it. You feel like it's a bad thing. You feel guilty. But when you're doing it on a spreadsheet with an advisor or with a coach or with a partner that you're looking at every dime that's going out and then your spending plan of where you want money to go for Georgia, for Aggie, for clutch, for your trip, yeah. for my kitty kitties, for the tortoise 20 years from now. If yeah. you know where you want money to go, it's easier not to do this. Like oh, yes. you could walk by Starbucks and not go that because you know, you're doing this but being restrictive without having excitement. So we always want you to celebrate. So you, like she said in the very beginning, you got a goal. So set your intentions. And then the F word comes in again. Not only do I want a goal, I want the feeling behind the goal. That yeah. is what is going to help you accomplish it. So when you are saying, I want Aggie, I'm doing the research, I want a burner doodle, I'm going to check it all out. It's not just all up here in our head. We literally have to put it in our heart and our stomach and yeah. feel it. What's it going to feel like when she's running around the house? What's it going to feel like when it's, you know, 30 degrees and I got to take her potty and train her? Like, yeah. feel all of those feelings so that you solidify your goal into who you are. Then it's so much easier not to go out to dinner, maybe do a happy hour instead or don't go to Whole Foods, go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods once a month or hit Costco a little bit more or go someplace else for cheaper gas or check your check your cell phone to see if you can get a cheaper plan or what else. Right. Our cable or, or everything. All those things. All Honestly, those things. The insurances, any of that. Yep. Double check all of that. And then you have a way to save here to spend where you actually really want to spend. Yeah. So I love that that you said, what's your priority? Well, and I, I heard something really valuable too in what you just said is you summarize that when we're making a choice, right, to forfeit our Starbucks this morning <laughs> and drive past it, right, to the office, um, you're making a conscious choice to prioritize you. Your goals, your, your goals, dreams. Yeah. Your needs, your goals, your dreams, yeah. but it's you. So it's you taking the initiative for yourself. And when you're doing that, you're reprogramming that cognitive wire that says I can do things for myself. And I'm important enough to do that. Yes. I'm I capable. Am important. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I love capable. That. I'm in important enough. I should come first. All those things. Yeah. I love that. That's very true. And we don't always put ourselves first. 
uh, especially if women, uh, you're, if you're a woman and you're listening to this, or if you're a codependent, oh. wonderful gentleman, um, and you're not putting yourself first, yeah. it's hard for us to do that. So we always have our clients start with, are you ready? List of 100 things that you love. Yes. Especially in my age when I'm empty nesting, we're, we're, we're finding out what it's like when the kids are gone. Who are we now? What are we like? What are we going to do? And then, you know, we want to find that person again. So what do I really love? What brings me a ton of joy? Like I love direct sunlight. I love mm. to have five or 10 minutes full of sun somewhere, you know, throughout the day. So mm. I know that I will always live in an area where there's sunshine because I, that just makes me happy. But if I didn't slow down long enough to look at that, I wouldn't have actually known that sun literally does make me happy. Yeah. Right. Did you know that before COVID? Um, I did not. Yeah, I did. Not. I, I think a lot of us can relate to that, honestly, because when we were so confined, especially being in California, when we were so confined. It was like it really helped me get grounded and understand these the little things that matter. Like people yep. would say that and I would just stare at them like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Next, now, next. I yeah. totally get it. I mean, it's, it really is what drives us, right? Like the little things. Is it the sunshine? For me, it's sunshine as well, but I love like bright, airy spaces. So I go out of my way to try to create that in my, in my workspace, but in my house in general too, because when I walk in the door, I don't want to, I want to walk in and feel like, <sighs> Like I've arrived, yeah. not, oh my gosh, like there's what clutter. Do yeah. What do I need to do next? There's laundry, you know, yep. dishes, that kind of thing. Um, and <laughs> being newlyweds, I know we used to talk about this a lot, Brian and I have found our, our rhythm, but he learned very quickly that if I came home from work, whether it was a great day or not, that if the house was picked up, you're going to be, I was gonna be in a way better mood. Yeah. So, right. It's those little things though. And being consciously aware and then making the same conscious decision to uphold what you need out of it. Right. Right. Which is setting your boundaries, knowing yourself, slowing down or knowing yourself. I always knew I liked sunshine, but I didn't really know that I needed it as much as I did. Like you said, when we shut down and I really realized that I, I literally need to like feel the sun on me. Yeah. Like I need to like, like do that. And then, um, slowing down to know what's important for you is really good. You said something else that I wanted to backtrack to. But I love the fact that she's newlywed, right? So you're getting to know if you're learn, learning to live with someone else. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about yourself. <laughs> and, and your if, needs. And if me on the other side, learning a lot about myself, I'm on the other side because I now I'm alone. So if you're alone. Crazy quiet. Right? It, alone you, with your own thoughts, as they say, exactly, right? Exactly. Which is audio book, baby. <laughs> well, it is. But you know what, too? Like, I know you spend time with quiet. Oh, yes. And... Do you find that when you have the quiet moments, whether it's like a walk without the podcast or sitting on maybe your beautiful balcony, like taking in the views kind of thing, mm -hmm. is that something where you feel almost like, like you've cleared your brain? Cause yes. for me, like that's the one, one of the big shifts. I'm an only, ch only child is my background. So for me having a busy house, one other person in it <laughs> and it the two is, dogs. It is the, it, yeah. It's a, it was a lot um, for me to adjust to, to a degree. So I think I craved some of the quiet. So like, for example, Ryan mm -hmm. is from a household of eight people. So six kids. And so for him, like the TV needs to be on all the time. Like there's gotta be background mm -hmm. for me. I enjoyed a little music, but something that was like very easy for me to tune out now, how many years into this army? <laughs> like three years yes. since the pandemic basically. So at this point, it's easy for me to tune out that TV without having a door on my office, um, that kind of thing. But that's also what headphones are for. But anyway, my point in bringing this up is that it's those moments of clarity that we need to, we need to seek them out sometimes, especially the lives that we're living today. today. We're yeah. just busy. I mean, we've got full calendar events. We've got screens in front of us, you know, yep. we have to make that conscious effort and, to slow down. Yeah. And animals, tying it back to our topic too, the animals help you help me do that. I yeah. mean, I hate to do my morning meditation without one of those cuddly furry friends snuggling me in bed or on the couch. Like I, that is how I get out of bed in the morning. Like that is more exciting to me than a cup of coffee or tea. 
Um, and I'll ditto that as well. My cat right? Luna loves it and it yeah. makes you slow down when your furry friend wants to sit on your lap and wants you, your attention, doesn't matter what you're doing. You look at that little face and you're like, Oh, I hear your cat mom voice coming out too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. You, you make your voice a little higher pitch. Yes. And, but honestly, when you're doing that, like I feel intense joy, I feel gratitude like I my little five-year-old that's you know dancing in the sunshine in her little watermelon dress is at peace like and I think again like that is why it's so important to prioritize your goals maybe you're not an animal person and you've been struggling through this podcast picking out what you can right so it doesn't even matter what it is that drives you that pushes you whatever it is you should I try not to say you should. No shoulds. No shoulds. No shitting here. Everybody's perfect here. <laughs> but it might be nice to prioritize there you go. yourself, right? So sit down and see what is, like, why do you get up yeah. and go to your nine to five? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's not just because you like your work friends, <laughs> right? Like, are you trying to retire early? Are you trying to hit a lofty goal? Are you trying to buy a property, a second property? Are you trying to start your own business? Are you trying to are start you your own business? Are already an entrepreneur yeah. on the side? You got a side hustle going. You want to turn that into your big... Today at the airport, yeah. I met an owner of a brewery. It started as a high, uh, side hustle, and now he's he's having a blast. I can't wait to go back and check out his brewery. Right. And we're going to do a doing. podcast there. Yeah. That's oh my gosh. Totally I yeah, yeah. And then I met a couple on the plane that retired at 45 because that's what they wanted. They wanted to retire early. We do specialize in helping people retire early. So that is a thing that is important to some people. And that's great. And we can absolutely help you do that. We're almost like uh, rounding our little turn here and finishing up. I wanted to go back to one other thing that you said earlier yeah. was about feeling guilty about spending money. Mm. Tying it back down to that. Is that your belief or were you, ooh, right? Because mm -hmm. when we have our belief, was it given to me, right? inherited? Right. So our beliefs are just a thought we've th thought over and over and over again. Well, guess what, kids? That starts in like childhood. So Mine's you're inherited. Yeah. So your beliefs that you have now, yeah. write them all down. Like, like when we say, what would you say if money walked into the door right now? What would you say to money? That's a great way to hear your inherited beliefs. Exactly. And Take get a minute in touch and write that. it all down and find out, oh. You should do a podcast on guiding people through that. That'd be a great idea. That's we've a great the, we've exercise. We've done workshops like that before. That would be really cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, we got a couple minutes left. I hope you're going to come back next week. Keep following us. It's a different topic all the time. Comment. You get your free gift if you subscribe and comment. And let us know how you like it. Anything that you want to know about. We can talk about almost everything here except for investing. We can't talk about that type of thing. And we cannot give any advice because we don't know you. we got to know our clients. Yep. So uh, check it out. And I'm hoping that um, you're getting something out of this. Go love your furry friend. Go swish your face and give them lots of loves. <laughs> My daughter has a beagle. Her and her boyfriend have a, a beagle. Uh, Quincy, we love Quincy. He yes, is, we do. Oh God, so and he Love has all that. these little diet restrictions. Yes. We love him anyway. Yes, him seems a pain in the butt. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we love our animals. Yes. It's okay to spend money on them. Let's yeah. just do a spending plan and make sure that we're all having a good time with it. Yeah. Juliet, her fam, thank you for picking me up at the airport anytime. Letting me come over for the podcast. I love it. We're having so such fun. a good time with this. I hope you guys are as well. Go find something that you love. Go put it in your basket, have it for a few days, and then purchase it. Have a good time with it and enjoy it. Juliet, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. You rock. <laughs> thank you, Juan. We appreciate you joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to the Rock My Finances YouTube channel for more engagement and bonus content. Tell me, what is your money story? Let's find out with Jennifer, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, every Thursday right here on K4HD Radio and Talk 4 TV. It's not about the zeros. It's about the F word, feelings. Feelings Jennifer can't wait to explore with you next week. Until then, let's all say, I rock my finances.